we were just talking recently uh, at an Edelman event, because Edelman has just released the results of its annual trust barometer, which measures uh, credibility and trust among influential customers uh, in 23 countries around the world. Um, I thought maybe you could share a few of the key findings with the audience about, you know, how are today's networked customers, you know, where are they actually finding the information when they look for something they trust? What are the sources and, and you know, how many times do they have to hear it? What's it take to, to penetrate them? Sure. I, I think um, the start, the, the study that we do, uh, we, we talk about uh, 5,000 people, 23 countries, and it's looking at trust in institutions, uh, government, business, NGOs and media. And one of the interesting things we found in the U.S. this past year is not perhaps surprising. Trust is generally down across all those institutions. Usually government and business uh, moved in sort of a seesaw way, but uh, this past year there was sort of uh, an echo response after uh, 2008. We saw everything move down together. So there's this overall skepticism and cynicism in the U.S. and I think uh, the president's uh, State of the Union last night, he was trying to show that there's a path to get forward. But I think that that's an important context for some of the other findings, which was from uh, where do people turn to, we asked, for information and um, for news first. And in the past, the answer to that question, we've been doing this about 11 years now, used to be TV news. And today, it's search is number one answer. And um, following that is, um, is, is online uh, news sources. And so what happens is you know, TV news and others have gotten bumped down because you can find information in a whole host of different ways than you used to. It's sort of, uh, of course, that's the answer, but it's just interesting looking historically how this is really restacked. And so, you know, you have to remember that search is sort of your new, um, you know, cover page story, and that's always, you know, predominantly how people are going to get their, their information first. The second thing is that we looked at, and we've now, we've now looked at this for a few years, is how many times you need to hear or see something before you believe it. And um, we've seen a pretty big uh, bump up again in the most developed markets, US and UK, where 25% of people need to hear something uh, six to 10 times before they believe it. Um, which, you know, again, that sort of uh, skepticism and cynicism, uh, you know, making itself apparent. And over 60% of people need to hear it more than four times. So, um, you know, the old way of communicating is really being challenged, the old, the old way of it being sort of a pyramid of authority versus this engagement model that you've described, it just sort of won't work. You can, you can try and direct to people, but if, you, if they don't find it from multiple touch points, they just aren't going to believe it. And so what are you finding in that environment where there's a need for so many multiple touch points, where people are starting with search and these other online um, sources first? Uh, for for businesses or, or nonprofits for brands that are trying to communicate, what kind of strategies are you finding are successful for them? Um, I think first of all, everything you have in your book is is dead on, and that's how we've had to change how we work with our clients. And it used to be if you have a really cl clever pitch to the media, you can get them to cover a story, and then you know it balloons from there. But you really have to turn the whole thing on its head. So I'll just give you a couple examples. So we do um, a bunch of work for eBay, and eBay um, was trying to increase its presence in the fashion and apparel space. They have about a $5.6 billion marketplace in that, and they're trying to change the way people see um, the purchase of apparel and fashion on eBay, that it's not just you know your secondhand clothes, but it's actually a place where you can get some overstock goods where you can get um, new goods from last year's line, a whole host of things. And so to do that, instead of just going out and saying, okay, well, we're a PR firm, we're going to go call the media and tell them that. The first thing we did is we created a site for them called the Inside Source, where we have a former editor of Lucky and about 40 journalists that use some of the data and information you get because eBay is a pretty big retailer, about what's coming up and what's changing and how the market is developing. And then that became um, you know, a, a, a credible site onto itself, sort of one step removed from eBay. And then we had credible spokespeople on behalf of eBay that we could then call the Today Show and say, you know, this person's watching these trends and is loosely associated with eBay. So that was sort of iteration 1.0. 
Then 2.0, we did sort of a, a lookbook with eBay for fall fashion. And in the lookbook, it wasn't just us coming up with looks for the coming year. We did a contest where you take the 96 million, you know, uh, um, customers of eBay and say, you know, submit the looks that you're, um, you know, going to be sporting this fall. And then we had people vote on them. We had like 50,000 people voting, and then we had an expert panel. And you end up with a with a short list of these, but not just the lookbook. But then, if you want to use it to inspire your purchases, you could say, "Oh, I like that blue blazer." It would then pull you into a thread of all the different, you know, similar products that you could purchase, right? Then we had again something that we could merchandise back into the social space, back into the media space. And then the next step, the thing that we're working with them on right now is uh, we're working with the designer Derek Lamb to um, uh, create an exclusive line for eBay. So just in the same way that H&M might have done this, you're doing it, but in an environment where you're going to skip over the you know the people at the you know the Bible magazines for fashion and you're gonna skip through the buyers at you know, Bergdorf or whatever it's gonna be, you're gonna go direct to the eBay customer to look at the 12 piece of the line, pick the five pieces that are gonna be produced, and then you have a sense of what you're gonna purchase. So it's a, a restacking of how that sort of value chain works. So, so it's looking at something where we're creating a conversation, we're getting the customer involved, and then we're sharing that in a, in a multiplicity of ways. So it's, you need that sort of idea at the center, multi-channel inputs and um, be willing to loosen some control. Don't expect that you're just going to sort of deliver your message out. So, and that's, you know, not atypical. I think that the best programs and there are a range of others that um, follow similar. But not sort of trying to control the whole message yourself. In sense you, you really can't, um, you know. Um, you know, one, another interesting uh, experiment we've done with um, the Ed Shave Gel went from the, you know, sort of, and, and if you sort of follow, you know, read Mashable, you probably saw a little piece on this, but, um, you know, they were trying to find new relevance for the brand after it moved from Essie Johnson into the Energizer brands, and they realized that the, their sort of core um, attribute was solving uh, irritation. And so what we did is, you know, first did sort of, there was a microsite, and then there was a study we did of like the most irritating cities to live in because <laughs> of, you know, traffic and um, whatever other reasons, typical PR tactics. And it was going reasonably well, it got a decent amount of our own coverage, but it wasn't really resonating in sort of solving the problem with just identifying that things were irritating. So the next thing we did is a Twitter program where it was a sort of surprise and delight program where we would look for people who would be saying, isn't it so irritating that? And we would be monitoring and then go solve that problem. So you're together. tracking like the word irritating. Or tracking irritating, or hashtag, uh, you know, so irritating. And then people would start, you know, sort of connecting the dots for this and then um, you know, ultimately, where you know, if you do things, it wasn't like giving things, giving people big spend dollars, but it was doing things that showed you're really listening, you really care, you really want to make their life less irritating. So the more creative you were for the person, the more people actually care, and shows that you're, you, you, there are human beings on the other side who, um, you know, are, really want to help you make your life better. So the. The momentum really built nicely on that, and then again, it, it became Twitter focused, but also um, into earned media and back and forth. So there's sort of a cycle that can go.